Hello, my name is Robert Bailey, and this is a short introduction to Script Runner for Confluence. So what is Script Runner for Confluence? Script Runner for Confluence is an add-on for your Confluence environment, and it's a very powerful administrative tool. Rather than extending the functionality of Confluence, which is what a lot of add-ons will do, we are giving you a tool set to improve Confluence as it currently exists. So rather than building an extension to your house, we're giving you the tool set to go and improve your house as it currently is. This gives you the ability to automate and control the flow of your Confluence environment, but also the tools to administrate your environment. So very powerful tools when it comes to that aspect. So what does Script Runner look like? So if I go to the um, administrative section of my Confluence environment, you can see on the left-hand side, we have Script Runner, as well as a list of the features within Script Runner, which we'll be going through a three of these through this demo. If I go to browse, you can see that we have all of the features of Script Runner for Confluence divided into four categories, organization, management, diagnostics, and automation. So if I know that I want to do some automation, but I don't quite know exactly what I want to do, I can filter down my tools and I can have a look and see what Script Runner actually offers me in terms of that functionality. So. The first thing we will be looking at when it comes to um, features is the console and built-in scripts. So the console is a tool that allows administrators to write and execute a script in Groovy one time over your entire Confluence instance. So this is that one-time data fix, that one-time data correction, that one-time data cleanup. So to view the console, it's very simple. Just go to the console here. You have this box here, which is where you would write your script and then click run. Now, built-in scripts were derived from the console. What we found when um, Script Runner was initially released is that um, across our user base, there was a lot of common used, commonly used scripts. So rather than have multiple users with the different variations of this script existing, we instead built those into Script Runner. So they're available to you day one without any coding experience needed. So if I go to built-in scripts, we have a list here. Now, Script Runner is available on other Atlassian tools, most commonly known as Jira. So if you are familiar with Script Runner for Jira, some of these will be familiar to you. So for example, logging in as a different user or viewing the server log files are two absolutely like the two most commonly used ones. However, because this isn't Jira, this is Confluence, we do have some Confluence specific built-in scripts. So for example, renaming labels, XPath searches, et cetera, space statistics. So for example, with this um, page, you can see I have a label, label underscore one here. If I go to um, rename my labels in bulk, I have the option to choose a space. So I'm just gonna go over every space. I'm gonna rename label one to label two. I run that, that runs over my entire Confluence instance. I can go back to this page and refresh and you can see that label one has now become label two. Now with Confluence, obviously there are two levels of administrative access. So you have your Confluence admins that, com that administrate your entire environment. And then you have your space admins. So these are your users that are administrative administrating a number of spaces rather than Confluence as a whole. Built-in scripts are obviously very useful for admins of any level. So there are a number of built-in scripts available to your space admins as well. And this is what advanced space functionality is. So if I go to space tools, I can go to my advanced space functionality. And here we have 10 of those built-in scripts available for your space admins to use. If I go into those, again, this is all configured. So it's just point and click, no coding needed or allowed. Um, I can target all spaces. However, previously as a Confluence admin, that would hit everything. This will now only hit the spaces that I am in um, ad, um, an admin for. Again, you have the filtering option available here and the option to run. There is no option for space admins to write custom code themselves. That is exclusively available to Confluence admins, but obviously these will be useful for any space admins. So the next feature is jobs or scheduled scripts. So whereas console was having the ability to write a script, a 
once one time and have it executed over your entire Confluence instance once. Should Schedule Scripts is writing a script that will execute periodically at given time intervals. So this is your daily, your weekly, your monthly task that you will be doing repeatedly um, at set times. And this gives you the option to allow Script Runner to do that for you, to have that, um, have Script Runner perform that functionality for you so that you don't need to and you can focus your time on other elements. So if I go to uh, jobs here and I go to create jobs, you'll see that we have two um, scripted versions. So this is custom scheduled job. So this is a custom script, uh, CQL, escalation service. So this is a script that is executed on specific um, pages that are returned from a CQL search and two specific confluence ones. So prune old page versions and old content notifier. We're going to look at prune old page versions. So for those who are not familiar um, with confluence, every time you make a change to a page, you create a new version. It's a, a auditing process. And no matter how small that change is. So if I go to this page and edit and I just remove an S, that will create a new version. So we have a, a macro here showing us all the versions. Pruno page versions will run periodically and allow you to either choose to keep a minimum number of versions or a versions that are um, delete versions that are older than a certain number of days. So this will run on Sunday at 12.30 a.m. in the morning, and it will do that now. However, I can run that now just to demonstrate this to you. So if I go to run now, you can see we've deleted one version from one page. And this page, if I refresh, has now gone back down to two. Listeners is the third core feature of Script Runner. So with console, you've got once over your entire Jira in, uh, conference instance. With schedule scripts, you've got periodic scripts that are executed um, at time intervals. With listeners, listeners are event-based scripts. So whenever you perform an action within Confluence, you have the ability to hook on the, the hook onto that event and execute. So whenever you perform that action in the back end of Confluence, an event is transmitted. You can with Script Runner, you can hook onto that event and execute a script when that event is transmitted. So this is very much your um, your event based automation. So for example, if I perform action A and I know that um, because of my business process, actions B, C, and D will um, follow that. I can actually have Script Runner do that for me rather than having to go and manually do that myself. So for this example, um, in my event listeners, if I go and have a look, I've got a custom event listener here. Um, this event listener will fire on the user create events. So every time you create a new user in this Confluence instance, this script will fire. All this script is doing I won't go through it now, but all this script is doing is this is taking a template that we have, which is a user bio template, and it's creating a page for the new user. So for example, if I'm an admin, I'm creating a new user, we've got a new employee. I know that if I create that user, I need to create a bio page for that user. Rather than having to manually do that, I can get Script Runner to do that for me. So if I go to users, and I go to add a new user, and we're just gonna add user A, and we're gonna give them a password. So now this user is being created, that event is being fired on the back end, and that script is now executed. So if I go and refresh here, you can see that that bio page has automatically been created. It's not something I've had to manually go and do. So the next two items we're going to be looking at, I'm actually going to combine to um, show you how you can combine these two for a more powerful feature, but we'll go through each of them separately. So custom REST endpoints are a very powerful tool for having your Confluence instance interact with other pieces of software. REST endpoints are um, is your gateway to other tools. So your other tools being able to interact with Confluence, um, either getting information or performing actions within Confluence. Confluence comes with its own REST API 
by default without ScriptRunner installed at all. But what ScriptRunner allows you to do is create your own custom endpoints, which you can then write scripts to perform certain actions. So if I go to my REST endpoints here, you can see that I've created a REST endpoint called button logic that will perform this script. So anytime someone hits that endpoint, they will this script will be executed. Fragments allow you to control your user interface. So this is about changing, making Confluence your own. So changing the color scheme or changing the font or adding buttons, interacting and changing user interface. So for example, I can add a button. So I've added this button here, new page, which and, and which is obviously a very powerful tool for customizing your Confluence instance. So if I go to fragments, and I go and look at this custom web item. I've created a new page. I've created the I section it will go in. If I go to um, enable here, this will show you all of the um, elements you can hook onto within Confluence and add buttons to. Um, call it new page. And all it is going to do is it's going to hit this link. Now this link is my rest endpoint that I've just shown you. So this is my button logic rest endpoint. So now if I press this button, it will hit this link, which will go into my rest endpoint and execute that script. So let's just show you what that looks like and we'll recap. If I go into here and I click on new page, a page has been created, I can refresh and you can see that this page has been created as a child. So We've created this button, which is hitting this URL, which is hitting the REST API. And we've got a custom endpoint called button logic, which is executing this script, which is just creating that page in exactly the same way we did with the user bio. So two very powerful and separate tools, but also showing you how you can combine them together um, to be very useful to you. Finally, but definitely not least is macros. So there are two sides to macros of script runner for Confluence. The first side is that you can have a, um, you have a number of macros ready-made and available to you the minute you install script runner. So the most commonly used one is page info. So I can go and define page information um, for a specific page and I can add that as a macro. So this is a very powerful tool, very commonly used. So you can see here, we've, we're using showing the participants, the differences and the created date. So if I go back to this page, you can see those macros working here. There are a number of other macros, very powerful tools that are available here. Um, I would definitely recommend installing Script of Confluence, even if it's just an evaluation, just to have a look at those macros and see what they can do for you. The other side of macros with Scrum of Confluence is it gives you the ability to create your own. So if I go to macros here, you can see I have a number of macros available. I haven't created a macro in this environment. So um, all of these are available day one, but you also have the option to create a completely custom macro. So this is a very advanced tool, but it does allow you to create, if you don't have a macro that you want and it doesn't go with script runner, you can go and just create it yourself. So that covers all um, the major topics of script runner for Confluence. There are other features, as you can see, if I go back to the browse section, you can see at the top here, we have um, other items that I haven't been able to cover in this. So for example, uh, CQL functions, search, search extractors, resources, very powerful tools in their, own, in their own right that will help you automate and customize your um, Confluence instance. But um, these are the ones I've covered are the most commonly used and most powerful tools. Additional resources. So obviously, because I haven't been able to cover everything, the best place to go for the items I haven't been able to cover is our documentation, where they're all explained in details with examples available to you. Uh, you can see the URL here. We also have the Adaptivist library. So obviously with Script Runner, a lot of the functionality comes from being able to write Groovy scripts. Not everyone knows how to write Groovy scripts or how to interact with Confluence through a Groovy script. And the library is a great place to start for there. We have 
ready built scripts in the library available to use. So you can just use them, uh, copy paste. You'll need to do a bit of configuration um, if they do exactly what you want them to do. But they are also a fantastic starting point to learning and showing you how you can start interacting with Confluence through Groovy scripts, um, even if it's taking snippets from five different um, scripts available in this library. It's a very powerful and very useful tool. And finally, if you have any re um, general information requests, bugs that you find with Screwing of Confluence or improvements and new features, please come and uh, let us know in the support portal. We're always interested to hear about people's interactions with Screwing of Confluence, how they get on with it, and um, if there's anything we can do to improve the experience. Thank you very much for your time today and have a fantastic day. Mm -hmm.